we're asked to find the absolute extrema of f of x comma y within the domain x squared plus y squared less than or equal to four squared, which means the bounded region is this region here where we have a circle centered at the origin with a radius of four. To find the absolute extrema on a bounded region, the first step is to find the critical points that lie in the bounded region and determine the function values at these points. The critical points occur where both first order partial derivatives are equal to zero or undefined, which means the first step is to find the first order partial derivatives. To find the partial with respect to x, we differentiate f with respect to x, treating y as a constant, which gives us four. To find the partial of f with respect to y, we differentiate f with respect to y, treating x as a constant, which gives us five. Normally we set these equal to zero and solve as a system of equations, but notice here, both are constants, which are never equal to zero and never undefined, which means there are no critical points in the bounded region. And this should make sense if we recognize f of x comma y is a plane. Step two, we find the extrema of the function on the boundary, which, is, which normally requires calculus one techniques. Well, the boundary is the circle given by the equation x squared plus y squared equals four squared, which is 16. To use calculus one techniques, to determine the extrema on the boundary, we want to write the function f of x comma y as a function of one variable rather than two, which means we need to perform a substitution. Let's go ahead and solve this for y. If we solve this for y, we would have y squared equals 16 minus x squared, and now we square root both sides of the equation. Don't forget the plus or minus. We have y equals plus or minus the square root of the quantity 16 minus x squared which means the function f of x comma y can be written as f of x comma plus or minus the square root of the quantity 16 minus x squared. By performing this substitution, we will have a function of one variable. Let's continue on the next slide. In this case, notice how the y is equal to plus or minus the square root of the quantity 16 minus x squared. For the case of determining the extrema of a function of one variable, let's just use the principal square root, but we need to remember to come back and find all of the corresponding y values. So we'll say f of x comma y is equal to f of x comma the principal square root of 16 minus x squared, and this will be when x is on the closed interval from negative four to four. Performing this substitution will give us a function of one variable. Let's go ahead and call that function g of x. So g of x is equal to four x plus five times the square root of the quantity 16 minus x squared. Let's write that as 16 minus x squared raised to the one half power. And now we need to find the absolute extrema of g of x on this closed interval, which means now we need to find the derivative and determine where it's equal to zero or undefined g prime of x is equal to four plus. Here we need the chain rule, where the inner function is 16 minus x squared. The derivative is five times one half times the quantity 16 minus x squared raised to the power of negative one half times the derivative of 16 minus x squared, which is negative two x. Simplifying, notice here we have two divided by two. So we have g prime of x is equal to four. We have a plus here, but there's a negative here, so we have minus five times x in the numerator. Let's write this in the denominator as the square root of 16 minus x squared. We need to determine whether this is undefined or equal to zero. Notice how we do have division by zero when x is plus or minus four, which are also the endpoints, but if we're listing our critical numbers, Let's go ahead and list x equals plus or minus four. I now need to solve this for x. For the first step, let's clear the fraction by multiplying both sides of the equation by the square root of the quantity 16 minus x squared. This gives us four times the square root of the quantity 16 minus x squared, 
minus 5x equals 0. Let's add 5x to both sides, which gives us 4 times the square root of 16 minus x squared equals 5x. Now let's square both sides of the equation. Be careful on the left, we square the 4, which gives us 16. Squaring undoes the square root, we have 16 times the quantity 16 minus x squared equals 25x squared. Distributing, we have 256 minus 16x squared equals 25x squared. Adding 16x squared to both sides gives us 256 equals 41x squared. Divide both sides by 41, we have x squared equals 256 divided by 41. And now we take the square root of both sides of the equation, which gives us x equals, the square root of 256 is 16, the square root of 41 does not simplify, and again this is plus or minus. So now that we have all the x values that we need, we need to make sure we go back and find all of the corresponding y values because remember, we used only the principal square root when it's really plus or minus the square root. So notice how, so using the plus or minus, if we use the x value of plus or minus 16 divided by the square root of 41, I've already simplified this, it does come out to plus or minus 20 divided by the square root of 41. Which means when we use the x value of 16 divided by the square root of 41, we need to use both a positive and negative y value. And the same thing is true when we use negative 16 divided by the square root of 41, we need to use both a positive and negative y value. And of course we can see when x is plus or minus 4, y would be 0. So we also have these function values here. So we have a total of 6 function values to consider. To save some time I've already evaluated f of x comma y at these points. The greatest value is the absolute max and the least value is the absolute min. We can see the absolute max is 4 square root 41, which is approximately 25.6125, and the absolute minimum is negative 4 square root 41, or approximately negative 25.6125. Let's go back to the first slide, record this, then verify this graphically. Let's use the exact values. The absolute min is negative 4 square root 41, and the absolute max is 4 square root 41. If we look at the graph, f of x comma y is the blue plane, and the bounded region is the region inside the cylinder, and the intersection of the plane and the cylinder. And now if we look at the red points on the boundary, we can see that this is the lowest point on the plane on the boundary, where the z-coordinate would be negative 4 square root 41, and this is the highest point on the plane on the boundary, and this is where the z-coordinate is positive 4 square root 41, resulting in the absolute maximum here and the absolute minimum here. I hope you found this helpful.